Buddy came to town. With a unique personal style, he challenged a struggling Eagle franchise to become winners. For most of the season, his efforts seemed futile. In the last four weeks, however, the Eagles may have become the most respected losing team in the league. Sixteen weeks ago, the Redskins and Eagles met in their season opener. Today, they close out the regular season with both teams still looking for answers. It is always a good one when the Redskins play the Eagles, and we have a sellout crowd of more than 69,000 at Veterans Stadium. We have a little bit of sunshine, but it is cold, 40 degrees, and it is quite windy and blustery down on the playing field. I have the pleasure of working with Joe Theismann. And Joe, the Redskins are going to play at home next Sunday against the Rams. They're already in as the wild card team, and somehow I have it in my bones that it's not particularly important for them to win this game but you disagree with me as you usually do well not really I do agree with Joe Gibbs who said it's very important that they win today they cannot go into the playoffs losing three games at the end of the year they need that positive momentum when they go back to RFK Stadium and they have a few things to get together such as the kicking game and special teams so we'll pay attention to that I don't imagine you could play for Buddy Ryan and go on the field and get away with anything less than your best. No, you're going to have to put a, an absolute ideal effort out there today. You know, at the end of the season, a lot of teams keep the car in, cars running in the parking lot because they want to say it's over. That's not going to be the case for these Eagles. There are a couple of questions they want to answer. Number one, how far has Randall Cunningham come? And secondly, can that offensive line protect him against Dexter Manley and that fearsome rush of the Washington Redskins? The Redskins are going to get the ball, and they have not lost three in a row since they started 0-5 in 1981, and Joe Theismann was the quarterback at that time. I thought I'd get a little shot in at you right at the beginning. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Here's Paul <laughs> McFadden kicking off, and Dwight Garner is back at the goal line and comes up to take the ball on the six. And the ball came loose as Garner got to the 20-yard line. The Eagles think that they, some of them thought they had the ball, but they don't, and the Redskins have it at the 20-yard line, and there's Jay Schrader, 20 touchdown passes, 19 interceptions. He's on the Pro Bowl team in his first year. Defensively for the Eagles, a four-man front. Pro Bowler Reggie White, Ken Clark, Tom Struthers starting at right tackle, and Greg Brown. Linebackers are Cobb, Reichenbach, and Joyner. On the corners, we have Young and Fowles with Waters and Hogue, the safety net. Rogers in the backfield. How's that for a start for the Redskins? Out to the 37 before Terry Hogue made the tackle. 17 yard pickup for George Rogers, and we'll check the others. Schrader Rogers, Monk, Sanders, two tight ends, Terry Orr and Don Warren, as Clint Didier did not start today. Joe Jacoby, Russ Grimm, Jeff Bostick, R.C. Thielman, and Mark May up front. He has the job of handling Reggie White. It's first down at the 37. Sanders and Monk are the wide receivers. Rodgers again. And more good yards and out to the 41. Ken Clark made that tackle, and already we know what the Redskins intend to do, Joe. Well, the Redskins want to try and test that 46 defense. You know, basically, it's an eight-man front. They cover the guard, the two guards in the center with their down linemen, move two linebackers to the one or, one or the other side where the tight end is. The Redskins have not run the football that effectively the latter few weeks, and that's definitely something Joe Gibbs wants going into the playoffs. Second down and six. Is to the left with Sanders. Barry Orr is put to the right side. And look at there by Tom Struthers, the tackle who came through for a loss of one. Struthers out of Jackson State. And he gets a chance to start today in place of Singletary. They're pretty good up front, Joe, led by Reggie White. They sure are. You know, that front four, the deep, the front four really puts a lot of pressure on quarterbacks, and that's part of the concept of that 
46 defense to get those big people up front so they can stop the run, force the teams to pass. On third and seven, Evan Cooper and Brenard Wilson come in as the extra backs for the Eagles. Schroeder probably to throw for the first time. The Eagles have been sacked numerous times, doing a little sacking of their own with Clyde Simmons, who had just come into the game, making the first hit back at the 35. You see right here is Art Monk. What they want to do is they want to cover him with him and him, and if, they're, if the Redskins are going to get beat, they feel like they're going to make somebody else complete passes. They do not want Art Monk to be the man responsible for catching big plays against him. Greg Garrity is back to get the punt, which is forthcoming from Steve Cox. Cox has a big average of 44 yards plus. Garrity has returned one for a touchdown. Redskins appear to be kicking with the wind, but that's a lousy kick and a bad bounce and a worse bounce. And the Eagles get the ball for the first time in very good shape. Well, the Redskins kept the ball for about two and a half minutes and had to punt it away a 27-yard kick. The weekend and things are all squared away with regard to the playoff in the NFC playoff picture in the AFC Kansas City has to win today and if they do they clinch a wild card and a home field for the wild card game Cincinnati has to win and they need a loss by Kansas City or New England in order for them to get into the playoff now Seattle won yesterday and they need two losses among these teams Kansas City Cincinnati or New England and Kansas City at Pittsburgh scoreless in the first quarter will keep close tabs and the Jets are ahead at Cincinnati in the first quarter. Anthony Tony lines up in the Eagles back there. He's a good runner, that kid. He got about six. He's one of their best rookies. And we look at the highly touted Redskin defense. Charles Mann, Dave Butts, Darrell Grant, Dexter Manley, Alvin Daniels, Neil Okowitz, and Rich Millard are the linebackers. On the corner is Darrell Green and Tim Morrison. Alvin Walton, the rookie at safety, along with the quarterback back there defensively, Curtis Jordan. Now Byers joins Tony in the backfield, second and four. Tony is stuck right at the line of scrimmage. No gain, and a lot of Redskin fans are here, and they enjoyed that action by Butts and Darrell Grant. Well, he ran into a wall by Dave Butts on that one. Cunningham is Byers and Tony in the backfield. Kenny Jackson, who really hurt Dallas last week, along with Pro Bowler Mike Quick. Up front, Ken Reeves, Bob Lancey, the rookie Mart Matt Darwin, the anchor of that line, Ron Baker, Joe Conwell, and John Spagnola, a real favorite here in Philadelphia. It's third and four. Ron Johnson is the third wide receiver for the Eagles. And a poor pass on the first throw. Anthony Tony was was one who was downfield and they nailed the quarterback after he released the ball Joe well you see Cunningham uh, go back in the pocket now that's Rich Mallott and Charles Mann coming from the outside Dexter Manley tries to get close and puts enough pressure on him but Richie Mallott forced him to throw the ball inaccurately and accurately run run incomplete and punt that's the way it's been for both teams here at the outset and John Telschick is back punting to Eric Yarber. They're setting the tone that it's going to be a defensive afternoon from the looks of it. We played about four minutes. He hung it high. It'll be well covered. And a fair catch called for by Eric Yarber. And the Redskins have it a little better off than they were the first possession. They're out to their 23-yard line. Quite a year for Schrader into the Pro Bowl in his first year, Joe. Oh, it's a great year. There you see his statistics, 3,882 yards. He'll probably go over 4,000 today. The other two gentlemen, Sonny Jurgensen and uh, Joe whatever his name is, or what's his name, each had 3,000-year seasons, three times, by the way. But uh, he's had, I mean, just a great year. I don't care who was playing quarterback. That young man has had himself a great season. At the 23-yard line. in motion. Oh, a good catch. Well, that's one thing the Redskins did on the first throw. A flag goes down. Albert Fowles made the hit on Monk, 
And a flag came down late, probably on fouls. Well, what happens is when you got somebody who's going to be double covered, and obviously the Redskin coaches saw that, they felt that the best thing to do with Art Monk is to move him. It makes it more difficult to double cover. They're talking it over. This might be tacked on to the end of the play. Bob McAway is the referee. That was a nine-yard gain. Offside, number 98, defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, number 29, defense. That penalty is accepted. 15 yards, automatic first down. Philly fans don't like that. Great catch by Art Monk, but right there, uh, you, he threw the you elbow, can't do threw that. the arm, the forearm. That's the kind of play that really hurts your football team. If you're a good football player, you just don't need to do that. The man's out of bounds. Why give him 15 yards cheap and free? The real estate's, you know, something you want to make them earn, not give it away. Well, he just did it, and it comes out to the Redskin 48-yard line. We talked to Buddy Ryan also. Uh, in the first game that Elbert Fowles started, he played 20 yards off the receiver. <laughs> they couldn't find it. Last week, he was five yards off, so Buddy's not quite sure where he's going to line up, and I know he doesn't want him to do that. He's playing in place of Evan Cooper on the right corner. This is the first down, of course. Warren lined up in the backfield, blocking for Rodgers. And a stout Philadelphia defense and a pickup of only two yards. The inception of Donnie Warren, the tight end, playing a sort of a fullback position for the Washington Redskins came about because of the 46 defense. Normally, the 46 defense likes to put two linebackers to the tight end side. But if you have the tight end in the backfield, they cannot commit. So offensively, you get the advantage to take your fullback, or tight end in this case, to either side. Now the Redskins go to the three wide receivers. Pick up of only one, second and nine. to Orr, but it was tipped. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Terry Orr. They really like him on this football team, Joe, because of his intelligence. They say he can play anywhere. He knows what all 11 people are doing on the field. He can read defenses, line up in the backfield, split out, play tight end, block, catch. Well, that's one of the prerequisites for a tight end in the Redskins system. He has to be able to do all those things well, but he has to be able to learn them in a two- or three-day period. Intelligence is a premium if you're going to play for the Redskins particularly on offense. I know it is on defense, but particularly on offense. Now we got a look at Kelvin Bryant. He's lined up. It's third and nine. And incomplete. They want intentional grounding. Don Warren was somewhere in the vicinity. Reggie White was after the quarterback Schrader. But no flag and punting times for the second time for Washington. Well, there you get an idea how strong Jay Schrader is. Here he is sprinted out to the right. Now, he sets up. Reggie White, look at him, just pushes him away, gets away. Now, Donnie Warren is blocking, and Jay Schrader, Schrader throws it away. Now, I, if I was an Eagle fan, I'd scream too. But the only one who could call intentional grounding is the referee, and he was busy. He was busy protecting the quarterback. With other things. The punter is Cox, his second of the day. That's a little better, but not much better. And a bad Washington bounce, and out of bounds at the 30. Well, the Eagles can't quarrel about their starting position, and this time they get it outside their 30-yard line, and we have played five minutes. Cox, Anthony Tony's in the backfield. Good hole, but it closed in a hurry. As Malott and others got there. Well, this quarterback, Randall Cunningham, missed last week. He was injured against the Cardinals two weeks ago. He injured his right thumb, and it really is still hurting him. He's had trouble taking snaps from the quarterback and to rehabilitate, Joe. He's dealt with these Chinese medicine balls, and that's to try and get a grip to get that thumb strong enough to be able to hold the football. And this helps out. Here is out of bounds at about the 35 by Olkowitz. Number 52, a two-yard loss on that play. Well, the tackle was made downfield by Olkowitz, but the guy that forced it was Rich Malott, the right outside linebacker, just firing up the field and causing Byers to have to change direction. Look at that fella. You talk about old man River. He just keeps going along. You know, he? when he was a free agent and joined the Redskins, everybody said, you're too small, you're not big enough, you're not fast enough. 
all he is is a great football player. And, you know, he plays now as a specialist. He's a first and short yardage, second down, middle linebacker. Vernon Dean and Ken Coffey are in the backfield. Well, he got away. He's going to get a first down. They almost had him. Or what would have been the 100th sack of the year, but instead he ran for 18 yards. That time they're bringing linebackers from the outside. They feel like if they can get to Randall Cunningham and put pressure on him like they did in the first game, it'll create problems. There you'll see the linebackers and this whole front four coming after him. Now you'll see him from the left side of your screen. Rich Mallott comes flying in. Haddock picks him up, but nobody blocks Monty Coleman. He doesn't get a good grip on him. Now this is an idea how fast Randall Cunningham is. Monty Coleman can really run. But look at him turn the corner. Now we'll put the ball away and go down like a smart quarterback. At the 47 of Washington. I want to tell you something. That thumb may bother him, but that fastball is still 90 miles an hour. You know, he can grip the football, and he really throws well. And there you can see right at the upper part, right where the knuckle is, right there, out of way. Does he have a normal grip on the ball like most quarterbacks? I would say he grips it like most quarterbacks do, but he cannot put the amount of pressure on it that he wants to, and it doesn't allow him the ability to really have control of the football. Now, throwing right, he can compensate a little bit. Throwing left, it makes it a little more difficult. Second and 10. Extra back, 10 coffee. Long run by Byers, got about nine. Finished off by Alvin Walton. You know, the one thing the Redskins are gonna have to do today Jets caught Cincinnati is, and San Diego is an important game is make sure that the Eagles don't get too much of a sense of confidence because what's going to happen is they come in as the favorite against the team that's going really you know home for the holidays now all of a sudden they're leaving them in this football game it's going to make for a real contest for them. third down and a yard. inside the 30-yard line. Curtis Jordan made the tackle. Nine-yard game. You'll see this block down here by Spagnola. It comes right in on Beasley. They kick out on Alvin Walton, turn it up inside, pick up the first down, and a lot more. The ball is to the 29 of Washington. This is a good eagle drive. Score here in the first quarter. And another first down. Tim Morrison made the tackle on Byers, a 14 yard gain, and they're really, this, this is an ordinary offensive line is rated by most people, but they're kicking them out. Way out to your right, you're going to see Dexter Manley come up the field. What they're doing is they're running to the defense's right or to the right of your screen. They're letting him come up the field in a pass rush mode and running the backs underneath them, blocking the lot and blocking down on Daryl Grant, creating a large hole. A first down at the Washington 15. to the line of scrimmage with Charles Mann taking him down. Charles Mann holding his position as a defensive end, not pursuing too much so that the back can turn around and circle the defense. That time, the blitz worked against the run. That's right. They brought some people right up the middle to try and put pressure on the Cunningham. We've talked about it earlier. There's two ways you stop a running game. You blitz it or else you have the people up front. The Redskins have the people up front, but they also wanted to blitz it down in this red area as it's referred to. It is second and ten. It's caught inside the ten yard line. It'll be third and short for the Eagles. Five, five, five left in the scoreless first quarter. Dave Little, the tight end, caught that ball at the eight yard line. Seven yard gain. 
was Spagnola coming up with it. Right on, Mark. Spagnola had been around here for a long time. This is his seventh year. And he was really hyped up before the game, trying to get his teammates going. Third down. And four. offensive line doing to the Redskins. Well, we, we said it was going to be a challenge. Joe Conwell and Ron Baker on the right side, right there, your right tackle and guard, they're just blowing out the right side of the Redskin line. You see him double-team Dave Butts. Spagnola gets a block on Monty Coleman, and now it's up to the secondary to stop him from scoring. And Morrison prevented the touchdown. to the goal line and nobody's called it a touchdown yet. Not that trip. They won't call it now. It is second and goal. Stop the clock with 429 left in this first quarter. This is just man on man power blocking. You see Cunningham make the spin. Byers leading and then he hits a wall of people. Great penetration by the linebackers of the Redskins. Sean Burks hitting him first. Kind of looked like he was over and the Eagles thought so. Joe Gibbs hoping that he'll make the Eagles settle for three or perhaps they'll cough it up. Tony has not scored a rushing touchdown all year. Byers only has one. Cunningham gets his own. Touchdown Eagles. with a very big run and an important first down. That's right, the Redskins had him trapped further back in that drive, and he managed to spin out and make the big play. He's that kind of a quarterback. He has the ability, with his running ability, to make a, a good play out of a bad one. 4 5 remaining in the first quarter. McFadden has missed one extra point out of 25 tries. That's good. 7-0 in favor of the underdog Eagles. And we'll see how... Turner from the eight. Did not get to the 30. The ball came loose. Again. Was it dead? Eagles have the ball. The question is, was he down? Boy, Giles made the hit. The Eagles do get the ball. Coming away was Charles Crawford. There's nothing, Joe, that changes the game any more rapidly than this. No, it really doesn't. The special teams really set the tempo. You'll see if he gets hit right on the ball. He manages to cover it up, and then just before he goes down, it slips away from him, winds up on the ground. Jody Schroll's just got that hand right around. Haddock's picked it up. That's been the area the Redskins have been very concerned with. Not only their kicking game, but their overall special teams. They've played a lot of young players, and they just haven't established the continuity and the dominance that they've had. Well, when this one is over on CBS, you will be watching the Bears playing at the Cowboys. The Cowboys didn't have a man at all on the Pro Bowl team, and the Bears still trying to solve the quarterback problem, Joe. Well, they are. I mean, Doug Flutie has come in and played, but I don't believe he still is their answer. I think when Jim McMahon got hurt, the Bears really, really are suffering at the quarterback position. Do you like Tom Zack? I like Tom Zack better than I like Flutie, the way he's playing. And do you like Fuller? Yeah, oddly enough, I do. But uh, Mike Ditka does so no matter what I think, it won't, it won't make a difference. Tampa Bay ahead at St. Louis and Kansas City trying to get into the playoffs ahead at Pittsburgh. They looked at the instant replay of that and determined the call was correct. Crawford recovered the fumble. And Cunningham puts his team back to work. Ken 
Reeves playing the left tackle. He's confronted with Dexter Manley. A diving catch by Little, the tight end. He's not known for that. But the Eagles are doing a lot of things right here. Little quick play action pass to the fullback allows that linebacker to move in. You see Rich Mallott get sucked in on the run. He starts to come upfield. Little quick play action fake right out to the tight end in the flat. To the point where they have to measure to see if he made a first down. He gets all of that roll because nobody had touched him. I think he made it. You're taking a guess, huh? Yep. He did by a narrow margin, and it is a first down at the 18 of Washington. Dexter Manley has registered 17 and a half sacks, and Reeves is going to try to keep him from getting any more. We talked to Ken Reeves. I said, what's the best way to handle Dexter Manley? He says, you've got to get on him real quick and don't give him a chance to get his momentum going upfield. Nor did he do any talking this week. He didn't talk to the press. He said, I'll just go out there and try to do my job. Strong run support by Alvin Walton, the rookie safety man. Lost two. Hey, you see the front line. They stuff it right here, and they get that support from the secondary that uh, that allows the, for the, for the play to be a loss. Redskins are so big up front. They just drive everybody in the backfield. Byers has to change direction. Alvin Walton comes up, makes it the perfect tackle. Head in front, plant the man. And the ball at the 20, second down and 12. Two tight ends, Spagnola and Little. And another great catch by the tight end, Spagnola, inside the 10 yard line. Curtis Jordan was on him. Rich Mallott was on him. It isn't that he wasn't defended. Like you say, Rich Mallott was in front. Curtis Jordan was behind. Just a great individual catch by Spagnola and an excellent throw by Cunningham. 11-yard pickup to the 9-yard line, third and one. Cunningham appears to be doing well. He is. He's and he also has thrown almost every pass to the right, which is something to take note of because that's where he feels most comfortable. Less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. And a timeout is called by the Eagles. 1-5-3 left in the first quarter. And on third and four for the Delphi. First and goal on the strong run. A fake to Tony and a give to Byers. Eight yards. Right here, you're going to see Byers come up the middle. You're going to see a great block. And this offensive line is just firing out on the Redskins' defensive line and creating holes. Keith Byers is now becoming the back I think Buddy Ryan thought he could be. You see him handle Sean Burks, and then Curtis Jordan and Barry Wilburn have to make the tackle, and you just don't want that. They're overpowering Washington up front. They're running right at him. It's pure guts football. Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, battle it out. First and goal. another touchdown. It's the first ever for the rookie out of Texas A&M. Number two draft pick Anthony Tony. So he takes the game ball to the bench. He loves it. Big moment for him Joe. Yes it is and he is a man who started to emerge against the Seattle Seahawks and Keith Byers has come a little bit later on but to Buddy Ryan now seems to have found his fullback and halfback combination. Paul McFadden makes it 14 to nothing. The NFC is all set in the playoff, as you know. And the New York Giants. to the 28 yard line. I, I thought he was going to break outside. Now the Redskins are trailing 14 to nothing. And Schrader gets some words from Gibbs and these Redskins are going to have to start 
getting something accomplished. Well, I think, you know, the Redskins always want to try and come out and establish a running game. They seek balance in their offense, run and pass. I feel like they're, they're a big play offense. That's the way they've been all year. They should start putting the football in the air now. That's the way they've made it. Now's the time to start making your move. Well, they've had to punt twice and they've fumbled once. Warren is the up back. First down pass, Raider going all the way, and it is well defended. Try to get it downfield, but Albert Fowles was covering Art Monk. Now, Monk is not really a speed burner as some others are. Well, he is, really, Jack. He's deceptively fast. He's just so big, but there you see Albert Fowles staying right with him. Now, Art Monk does an excellent job playing defense and trying to go for the ball. It's part of the offense. They're a big play offense, and they're going to go after him. And with Gary Clark out of the lineup, the man that they have to hang their hat on is Art Monk. We know about Fowles. It's tough to get behind him. He plays way off. He'll be somewhere back there, I'll guarantee you. Second and ten. Tight end Terry Orr splits out to the right. Kelvin Bryant comes out and gets about nine yards on the pass play with Joyner, the linebacker, staying with him. Rynell Young had been shadowing Monk and jammed him at the line of scrimmage. That's part of the problem you run into. Wh who do you really double cover on the Washington Redskins? Do you double cover Art Monk or do you double cover Kelvin Bryant? It's up to Jay Schrader to find out which one is single. That time it was Bryant and he hit him with the completion. Making a third down and a yard. Brothers, Singletary up front for the Eagles. Warren blocking, Rogers slicks, but gets a first down. And that will mark the end of the first quarter. It's a first down for the Redskins at their own 39-yard line, but they trail by two touchdowns. It's 14 to nothing. He's seven touchdowns and has a bad ankle and will not play today. is following Warren once again. The big play guy for the Redskins is on the bench. Look at 15 times a gain of 25 yards or more. Look, that, that After Jay Schrader's name, you see the number 45. That's how many plays he's been responsible for over 25 yards. You see Clark, Monk, Didier, and others uh, have just made big plays. It's a big play offense. Is it different than they used to be? Absolutely. Second seven. That ball took off as he tried to get it out to Terry Orr. And it is going to be third down. Joe Theismann is enjoying this game a little bit more than most people because when they signal a play in from the sideline, he knows what it's going to be. I have a pretty good idea sometimes. Uh, what they're going to run and when they're going to run it. And the last thing I would do would want to be give away any secrets of a football team, but it, it can help sometimes to, to concentrate on an area where you're looking. I think they're going to try and throw, you know, a 10, 12, 15 yard out possibly to uh, Ricky Sanders, who was down here at the lower part of your screen. Monk goes in motion. Raider went the other way and got a first down as he hit the tight end, Terry Orr. He can't be right all the time. No, first down at the 46 of Philadelphia. That was a third down play. Evan Cooper was covering an 11 yard pickup. Terry Orr is playing for Clint Didier, who is another one of the big play receivers for the Redskins. Doesn't necessarily have the height. He's at the top of your screen. You'll see him, Art Monk is gonna clear out underneath for him and he's gonna hook right in that hole. Come back to the ball like a good receiver. Jay Schrader puts the ball right on the money. The Philadelphia 46.
another turnover for the Redskins. The ball hung, Joe. It did, and that time the Redskins, you'll see everybody on this offensive line plus the back is going to block. The Redskins got the coverage they wanted one-on-one -on -one with Art Monk and Ronell Young. Jay just hangs the ball up down the middle. Ronell's a little faster than he thought. Art couldn't make the play and knock it away from him. And Young came away with the interception, and that's his fifth of the year. Five this year. That's a career high, and he was a little bit shaken up. The ball rests at the Philadelphia 10. A couple of turnovers by the Redskins. Fake to Tony. Whoa. And it went off the fingertips of Mike Quick, and there was good coverage downfield by Tim Morrison. Quick's a member of the Pro Bowl. He was a little bit banged up last week and ill as well. So he didn't play much against the Cowboys. I think if there was any question how severely Randall Cunningham's thumb is, we found out on that pass. He put that thing exactly where it had to be with the kind of touch and trajectory that's necessary for deep passes. Ron Johnson is in in place of Quick. It's 14 to nothing. Eagles. Myers and Tony. The delay is faded, and Dave Butts slowed it down, and he got some help from Calvin Daniels. There's Roy L. Young. He was smiling when we last saw him yesterday. He's huffing and puffing right now. Hey, you got to chase people around. I've, I've always felt that Roy L. Young is one of the best corners in football. When Marion Campbell was the defensive coach in Philadelphia, he had to play a lot of zone. But in college, he played a lot of man-to-man. -man. So playing under Buddy Ryan, he's glad to be back, bumping and running. And you'll see him mirror Art Monk all over the field today. That is going to become his assignment this afternoon. Ball at the 14. Third and six. And the linebacker Coleman came shooting in there and sacked him. That's the first time, and that is the 100th time the Eagle quarterbacks have been sacked this year. That's an ongoing record. Well, it is a continuing record. There you see it. And I, I think I'll make a statement here. I don't think many people are going to catch that uh, particular <laughs> number, and I'm sure there are 27 other teams in the league, 28, that don't want to try and catch it. It's the one area that the Eagles really, really have concerns about is pass protecting their quarterbacks. The Redskins should get good field position after this punt from John Telchik. It's his second of the day. Eric Yarber is back to get it in midfield. They're set up for a return. Pressure. And he kicked. Yarber from the 44. Look at there. Look at there. He's down near the 25 yard line and no flags. 11.47 left in the half. The Redskins have been shut out. They trail 14 to nothing. A key block here. You'll see Gary Cobb outside and William Frizzell is going right for Yarber, but what happens is. Uh, Griffin blocks him, knocks him out, and gives Yarber an opportunity to hit those lanes. You'll see him set it right up there, does a nice job setting up his block, and then up the field he comes. Telcher's going to hold his ground to and, make sure he gets some help. And Spagnola gave him the help. The ball is at the 26 of Philadelphia. The later Rodgers and taken down from behind. It's just so hard to run counter plays that the Redskins have really made famous against the 46 because you've basically got an eight-man line. It's a one-yard loss. Ken Clark and others were in there defensively for the Eagles. Greg Brown, they're tough up front. This is an obvious passing situation for the Redskins. They like to throw when they get down close anyway. Bryant is in. And I would imagine they're going to try and get the ball to Art Monk somehow. You know something, don't you? Monk's in motion. Gut feeling. He's down the middle, and the pass is outside and dropped by Bryant. Monk had broken loose. He was wide open. But Schrader saw Bryant, and he dropped it. And he was wide open, so both of the big guns for the Redskins got open. They just didn't make the play. 
Schrader is three out of nine, and there are the figures thus far, and you can see the Eagles are dominating in the rushing department in total yards. Third down and ten. Didier's in the ball game now. Anytime Diddy Clint Didier comes in the ball game, you can pretty much rest assured that they're interested in trying to get him the football somehow. And he comes in motion. Young right down there. He's just going to fall back as the receivers run crossing patterns. You're, you'll see what happens. They fall back and Schrader gets flushed. Now they're in a really a man to man coverage with zone underneath. Young's up top. Now Sanders moves across. It looks like he's going to go to Didier. Nope. Jay Schrader makes a, a key mistake for a quarterback and a lot of young ones do it. He tried to throw back into the middle of the field. You'll get nine out of ten picked off if you do it. The ball's at the Eagles, too. It's the third turnover for the Redskins. And they come out near the seven or eight yard line. This is also a spot where the Redskin defense has got to hold the Eagles so that they can get good field position. This is the sort of game that Schrader had against the Giants, isn't it? Yeah, he's getting flushed out of the pocket. And uh, the Giants made the statements that they feel he's less effective when they can make him move around the football field. And it's been evidenced here today against the Eagles. Ball is out to the seventh. Second and five. Tony's in the backfield. Not that time. Okowitz jammed it in there. Right behind Daryl Grant. And it's third down coming up. First four times Philadelphia has had the ball. They had to punt the first time and the last time, but in between, they've racked up a couple of TDs. They've kept the ball away the first quarter. They kept the ball over 10 minutes, which is very unusual because the Redskins concentrate on ball possession as a part of their offensive philosophy to win. Gibbs is not enjoying this period of time in Redskin history. No, he's not. He definitely does not want to lose three in a row. They're looking for somebody to fire up their ball club. Now, a lot of times you look to the special teams, which really haven't done it, or the defense. And that guy right there, Daryl Green, has the ability to make a big play. He's always cheering his team on, and he can really make it happen. Michael Haddix is in the backfield on third and five. But take a toss to him, and Cunningham is very close to a first down and does in fact have it with 920 left in the half what a difference when the guy can run at the quarterback uh, such a difference in the first ball game when the redskins won 41 to 14 when they played the eagles randall cunningham now has had a full season under his belt he seems much more composed and the one thing that i'm impressed with is the, is the decision to pull the ball down and run with it instead of just put it up in the air or stand back there and get sacked he ran for six, a first down, out to the 13. Anthony Tony is out with a bruised chest. And they stopped that delay cold with Okowitz there along with Darrell Grant. One yard gain, and it is second down. It's really not been the problem with the Redskins on first and 10. They have contained the Eagles. Where they've had a problem is containing Randall Cunningham on second down and long or third down situations. You know, a lot of teams have played against the Eagles and used a spy. That's somebody that mirrors, mirrors Randall Cunningham. But there, there in the middle of your screen is, is Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator. He feels like he doesn't need one. Greg Garrity is the extra wide receiver. Drive this down. Run play is stopped. And it appeared that the Redskins were offside. That's that quick start at Dexter Manley's. You know, he just gets jacked up and ready to take off. That first big hut, and he's gone. Offside Washington, so they'll accept this penalty. And you saw that Kansas City is winning their game. 72 defense. Dexter Manley was offside. A victory by Kansas City, and you saw their score would put them in the playoff. They'll be the home team wildcard team, and they're ahead 10 to 3. 
in the second quarter. Ball at the 19. to the 26 for a first down. The Redskins are just not tackling well. There's no way you can say it other than the fact that they're they're hitting people, but they're just not wrapping up. They're just not wrapping up and making any kind of an, an effort to stop them. There you'll see the pitch to the right. Byers is going to cut it up. Now they've got him stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Maddox was a pretty good Oldwich block. does an excellent job. Malat just hits him with the shoulder, not his arms, and he winds up with the first down. At the 25, the Eagles started at their two-yard line. Chewing up the clock while protecting the lead. Cunningham outside right through the arms of Quick. Quick usually catches those. Dexter Manley is getting a lot of attention over the other side. Well, he's going to get a lot of attention. You know, they want the tight end over there to help out. They don't want Dexter running free. So there you see Darby blocking on him, Reeves blocking on him, and Byers is backing up just in case he does get through. The Eagles have ten first downs, nine by rushing. Second down, ten. Tight end Spagnola has it for a few. And he struggles for another yard. In the grasp of Walton and Jordan. Cleveland is ahead of San Diego, and Cleveland's trying to nail down the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And a kickoff return by Boyce Green elevated Kansas City to that 17 to 3 lead in their game at Pittsburgh. We are at Veteran Stadium, sun shining, chilly day. Capacity crowd, Joe Theismann, Jack Buck with you, and the Eagles leading 14 to nothing with all of their points in the first quarter. 6.20 left in the half. Third and three. First down. That is only the second pass ever caught in the pros by Byron Darby who had been playing on defense, and they made a two-way player out of him. For four years, he played defense. Now, all of a sudden, he puts on the white jersey and number 84. Right here at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a play-action fake, and then you'll see Randall Cunningham come out. The Redskins seem like they have him, but nobody covers Darby. That was Charles Daniels that moved in to try and put pressure on the quarterback. Couldn't make the play. 13 yards out to the 45-yard line. Very good play calling today by the Philadelphia Eagles. It's an excellent job of keeping the Redskins defense off balance. That was Haddock skipping through the line for a couple of yards. One of the things that's got to concern the Redskins coaching staff on defense is the amount of yardage that the Eagles are picking up on first and ten. They're constantly getting three and four yards. So they're coming up second down and seven, second down and six. That's when a defense really has to be on the defense. See that Cincinnati is pulled even. They're fighting for their lives. Kenny Jackson is in as a wide receiver. Very close to a first down to Spagnola, and there was a lot of rhythm on that play, Joe. Randall Cunningham is are, is doing things that he can do very well. Quick little fake, little short pass. You don't have to throw the ball with a lot of accuracy. His receivers have really been wide open, so it hasn't been a problem for him to get the completions. As this game goes on, he's just going to continue to get confidence and present more of a problem to that Redskin defense. And they have kept the ball away from Washington. The Redskins have turned it over three times. It's a third and one play coming up here. Adam Schreiber checks into the offensive line. Washington three turnovers. They've only totaled 52 yards. Ronnell Young has picked off two, and there's been a fumble as well. Third and one. First down. Fires blasting in. They're killing the Redskins with the clock, Joe. They're just handling it. That's right. You're, you're absolutely right. They're doing something the Redskins always try and do, and that's keep the ball. But what's happening is the contest is being won up front. The line of Reeves, 
Lancey, Darwin, Baker, and Conwell are handling man, Butts, Grant, and Manley. I mean, there's no other way to put it. They're being handling, they're handling that Redskin front four. Philadelphia started at their two-yard line after the interception by Young, and they're down to the 43 of Washington. They've kept the ball for more than six minutes. Quick for the first down to the 30. Cunningham is hot. You're looking at a surgeon out there right now. Everything he's doing is right. He comes up, he talks to Mike Quick. We talked to Randall a few weeks ago, and he said the week that they spent in Los Angeles, about three weeks ago before the Raider game, he got a chance to spend some time with Mike Quick off the field, and they became very close, and he started to appreciate and, and gain a confidence in him. A lot of quarterbacks find that one guy they want to hang their hat on. For me, it was Art Monk. It looks like for Randall Cunningham, it's Mike Quick. First down at the 30 after the 13-yard game. Four minutes left in the half. You think he's not hot? That was quick again. When Roy L. Young intercepted, there were 10 minutes and 50 seconds left in the half, and now they're 350, so they've had the ball for more than seven minutes. That's Mike Quick working on Tim Morrison. He just makes the turn, bang, bang. As soon as he makes the turn, the ball's there. Takes better than good defense to try and stop that. That was good for nine yards. And it's second and one, and the Eagles could call about anything here. That's not what they called an Olkowitz, who seldom comes in on the blitz. Nailed him for the second sack today. I think that was the first bad call they've made in this drive. It's second down and one. You're down around the 20-yard line. Both your backs are running well. You can give it to Tony or Byers. You're probably going to get the first down. Take more time off the clock and have an opportunity for a field goal. Now you're back at the 29-yard line. You're working on getting out of field goal range, and you've given the defense a chance to get a little inspiration. That was probably the only call I wouldn't agree with so far in this drive. Second sack today and 52 for the year for Washington, third and nine. Aaron in motion. A running play on third down. I know. I don't understand it either. Both Joe and I are looking at each other up here as Byers ran with the ball. It's fourth down, and McFadden, the field goal kicker, says, hey, thanks a lot. Well, you've got control of this football game. You're driving the ball down their throat. It's second down and one. You make the first down. It goes down to a two-minute warning, and you still put pressure on them. Now you're forcing your kicker to try and kick a, what is it, a 44-yard field goal into a slight breeze. 44-yard try. Kelchick got it down, and the wind stopped it. McFadden's longest of the year was 50 yards. Well, that play call on second and one really slowed the mat down. 218 left in the half, and the score remains 14 to nothing. Philadelphia pull on CBS Christmas Day. 218 left in the half as Didier goes in motion. Line and Sanders is undressed. What a big hit by Fowles, but that's very close to first down. Boy, did Jay Schrader gun that ball out there. That's the one thing Jay does. He sits in the pocket, and when he makes his mind up to let it fly, he throws it as well, if not better, than anybody in the league today. You know, we can go back to that's the play. That's a first down. And we can, go, we can go back to that second down and one play that the Eagles had. If they keep the drive going and they get a first down, that means the Redskins don't have an opportunity to do what they're going to try and do, and that's go down the field. You have to understand, in the last, I think the 36 touchdowns that have been scored against the Redskins, or against the Eagles, they've averaged almost 30 yards for every touchdown. On that drive, the Eagles had it for 17 plays, 8 minutes and 32 seconds, and and came away. No points. Doesn't do much for your football team from an emotional standpoint. And if the Redskins could go down and score, you could see momentum change real quick in this ballgame. 2.06 left in the half here. The big plays really uh, have hurt Philadelphia lately and almost cost them a game when they upset Dallas last week. Well, yeah, here you see 36 touchdowns. The average score has been almost 30 yards. They don't play any goal line defense. They don't have to. Nobody ever gets that close. Kelvin Bryant 
is in the backfield. Don't shut these Redskins out for a full half very often. Quickly out here to Bryant. And a worthwhile gain, and that takes us to the two-minute warning with 1.59 left in the half, and Terry Hogue made that last tackle after a six-yard gain. 1.59 on the clock. Second and four at their own 45. everybody Ricky Sanders was closest to it trailing 14 to nothing does this take George Rogers out of the game yeah, for you Washington won't, you won't see George Rogers the rest of the half Kelvin Bryant's in there because they want to throw the football and he is a better receiver than George Rogers uh, you know George is going to be their control back he has been he's their first and second down back he, he's a he's a he's their power back Kelvin Bryant is their versatility back he can run and pass but basically a pass receiver Clyde Simmons comes in to help with the pass rush on third and four. Evan Cooper is in. Green Iron Wilson is in for the Eagles. The ball is tipped, caught, and not a first down on third down. So it's fourth down, and the Eagles have stopped them, and the Washington team will either have to gamble or punt. I think the Redskins should gamble right here. I, I think they need something to help this football team get some confidence back here's a new kicker Jess Atkinson you know former look, mortgage banker watching him kick before the game you know you just look at the young man and you know that he's concerned he's he's well aware he lives in the Washington area so he's well aware of the kicking problems and he sees this as his big opportunity there he's trying to stay warm in case they get the chance the Redskins on fourth down are five out of nine this year and it's fourth and one now Schrader can run and roll out let's see what he does Hands off, and the offensive line, there's a flag down, first of all. Offensive line had a pretty good surge. Could be offside against the Redskins, possibly in their lineup. Bob McAway is the referee. He's going to sort it out. Joe Gibbs is not happy. He Illegal just, motion, 63 offense. Still fourth down. Well, it's still fourth down, and now the Redskins are going to punt. You know, in a situation like this, Joe Gibbs is just trying to, what he's trying to do now is gather his thoughts to figure out what he wants to tell his football team at halftime. He basically handles the offense, and he'll get in there, and I'm sure he'll give them a talking to and say, look, you know, this has been three football games. We've got to get our heads where they belong and get ready to play some football because we've got the Rams next week in the playoffs. He's not a happy man. It's a third punt by Cox. Garrity waits for it. From the 22. And big coverage downfield and the Eagles recover the fumble. And that was Hamill down there, number 78. That, that wasn't a fumble. That was a set-up reverse. Oh, was it? Garrity was going to catch the ball, hand it to Kenny Jackson, who was going to go to the left side of the field. But Dean Hamill, who's been their stalwart on, on special there, teams, makes the play. Now there's a flag back upfield. Ineligible man. On setting fouls, replay the down. They're going to replay the down. We had holding and ineligible downfield, so they're going to punt over. Now the Eagles get a chance to see whether or not they want to try the reverse again. I say this right in the Hamill. middle of your screen <laughs> is Dean Hamill. There he comes down. Now watch this. He not only hits Garrity, but he whips up and gets Kenny Jackson. <laughs> it's like taking, what, the three and five pin out when you're bowling? We have 53 seconds left in the half and another punt. There's the yeah, reverse. That's your right. There he is, 292 pounds running down on punts. Wouldn't you love to be a punt returner and see that coming at no. you? 53 seconds left in the half. Another high booming kick by Cox. He should have let it go. But gets out. Whoa, he's horse collared. And then there goes the flag, and it might have been a face mask. And it was Terry Orr, the tight end downfield. That was a 51 yard kick. An eight yard return and a penalty. They have a penalty for decapitation. First, no foul face mask. 
I think that was unintentional. The Redskins. Personal foul, 15 yard face mask. Well, that's a big one. I don't know, you'll see right here on the right of your screen, that's Monty Coleman, just reaches out to try and grab. See, I don't know how you make the determination. Did he get he, the face mask? Yes, he got the face mask, but it wasn't intentional and it wasn't flagrant. But it was a good one. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> is that is that how you determine the difference between 5 and 15, whether it's good or not? Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> out to the 29. We'll see if the Eagles try to move the ball with 42 seconds left in the half. Philadelphia will receive the second half kickoff. And I'm also sure the Eagles will be content to go in at halftime 14-0. We'll check their approach here. They scored on two one-yard runs. One by Anthony Tony and one by Randall Cunningham. And they stay on the ground with Haddix. Haddix got about six on that play. And I don't think either team is anxious to stop the clock. And that's correct. 30 seconds left. So the Eagles pleasing the hometown crowd as they try to win their sixth game of the year and Joe Gibbs has a lot to think about saw Jack Faulkner of the Los Angeles Rams he's in town scouting this game the Rams play at Washington next Sunday the Eagles really don't have to run another play here if they don't want to it looks like they're going to anyway for practice and that marks the end of the first half and you have to admire the way these Eagles down in the standings are playing and meanwhile you have to scratch your head about the Redskins. What's going on? And Crawford takes it from the five. Couple of good blocks, and he's out across the 20-yard line. The ball came loose, but the ball had been whistled dead. And Keith Griffin got downfield. He's been playing well on special teams, and we've seen him give a lift to this Redskin team whenever he came in. Washington wanted the football but they're not going to get it they were, they were really politicking for it too we had a flag on the kickoff it was offside against Washington they're going to make them kick it over offside number 78 kicking team free kick yeah. five yard penalty that was Hamill and it gives us a chance to look at the stats from the first half look at there Eagles and rushing Eagles and passing and total yards and the Redskins can't get off a dime. Here. They really can't. You know, and time of possession is something like 21 minutes yeah. to eight minutes. I mean, that that is very uncared. Usually it's the other way around. That's the way the Redskins would like to have it. But uh, the Eagles have come out. Like I said, this game is being handled up front by both the offensive and defensive lines of each ball club. Right now, the Eagles have the advantage. So Cox will kick it over. Another good boot. Crawford again takes it on the five. Well, they may have made a mistake taking the penalty. No, they didn't. Crawford got all he could get out of it. Out to the 33-yard line of Philadelphia. And Dwight Garner was downfield to make the tackle. Cunningham goes back to work at his own 33. This offensive line, uh, well, they moved to Hayden out. And they put Lancey in a guard along with Reeves, Darwin, Baker, and Conwell. They're playing in terrific fashion. They really are. You wouldn't think that that offensive line would be responsible for 101 sacks of the quarterback the way they played today. Spagnola, the tight end. And Haddix ran into the quarterback, and that slowed him down. You know, I'm sure Joe Gibbs in the huddle said to, or in the, in the locker room, said to his team, and, and I've heard him so many times, it's the first five minutes of this half that's going to determine how we go out and play. And we've got to play a good half. We've got a chance now. Let's go out and make something out of it. I think he said it a little stronger than that, but I think that's what he meant. You can see Darrell Grant out there trying to take charge and get things going. Charles Mann made that tackle at second down and eight. And the later Byers. And Okowitz stayed with him. And it'll be third down and long coming up, and Darrell Grant was also there defensively. That's just some great individual running by Keith Byers. They're having a great game at Cincinnati with the Jets leading, and Cleveland trying to nail down the home field advantage for all of the playoffs. Two returns by Sikahema as St. Louis out in front. 
Vernon Dean checks in and Coffee checks in. Kansas City has a couple of scores from their special teams and it looks like they're going to be in the playoffs as a wild card and play at home. Shame about Minnesota getting knocked off. They're a good team. And the way they got knocked off. Last week on a questionable call. Third down. And a long five. And it's apparently, well, I'm guessing that he's shy by a couple of inches on that. No, he made no, it. He made it. He got more forward progress than I thought he had. A five-yard gain and a first down. Just great individual effort. When you're 240 and you're running into a guy that's 185 pounds, your momentum's going to carry him. Do you think school is still out on buyers, or do they like him now? I think I think he's gotten back out of the doghouse. I think he was in Buddy Ryan's doghouse for a while, and uh, could have been because he missed training camp the early part of the year. I think he's out now and roaming around the, the barnyard, so to speak. He's their number one. He comes off the field. Setback of takes to him. An exciting play with Quick on the other end of it, covered by Tim Morrison. They ran that little hook and go, and uh, they ran the little turn ins and little outs on Morrison earlier in the first half. Now, here you'll see Quick runs a post on him. Morrison does a nice job of holding his position. Quick's going to go up for it, like a good receiver does. Second time the ball has been underthrown long. Well, I think that's really where Randall Cunningham is being affected more than anything. This is deep passing. The thumb, you mean? Yeah, he, he can't quite get the ball out with the touch and the velocity that he wants to. They wait for Quick to get back to the huddle, and then they start the 30-second clock. Anthony Tony will not return to the game. He has a bruised chest, and so Byers runs with it. Not much on that one. A one-yard gain by Keith Byers and Darrell Green bumped him out of bounds. The Green's a tough little guy. They have him listed at 170 pounds. Is that about right? Yeah, he's 170 pounds, but but he could be 270. He just happens to be the fastest man in the National Football League, and nobody's going to catch him. The great thing that he possesses, great thing that he possesses, more than any athlete I've seen, is catch-up speed. You can beat Darrell Green, but you better get the ball to the receiver right now, or else he's going to make up that ground. Vernon Dean checks in. Ken Coffey checks in for the Redskins. Third and nine. And Cunningham wanted to throw but couldn't get rid of it. And he gained a yard out of bounds so it's no sack. And it's fourth down. Well the Redskins tightened up that time. Well they did. The Redskins came out and did what they had to do although they didn't force a turnover. There you see Don Bro to, to Joe Gibbs right. They're talking about what they want to do offensively. That's what Gibbs was talking about yesterday. Turnovers. He said, we're just not doing it. Well, they, they've been giving them up offensively and have not gotten them on the defense. They are even on turnovers. This is the third punt for Telchik. And back to get it is Eric Yarber. He could give a lift to this Washington team. Tough to punt in this direction. Yarber took it on the 14. Up near the 25. So it's the first time in the second half the Redskins have had the ball. That was a 40-yard punt timing. The Redskins have punted, punted, been intercepted, and again, both by Roynell Young. In addition, they fumbled a kickoff return. Then they had to punt again. Well, you know, the last time this happened was in week six against the Dallas Cowboys, and they, they lost that football game. In. Here's where their offense has really got to pick up steam. They've got to get the ball down the field and get something in the end zone. Field goal, touchdown, anything. Rodgers is a setback. That goes down rather quickly as Warren was leading the play. A three-yard gain, and Reichenbach made the tackle. Reichenbach... Number 55 calls the defensive signals and he runs things on that side of the line. And in talking to him yesterday, you know, we had a chance to, to find out a little bit more about the concept of defense. And he said, really, there's a lot to learn, but it's more important that everybody gets where they belong. And that's his job to make sure everybody gets there. So we all have lanes to cover. It's busy. Motion by Orr. Rodgers moves across the 30-yard line, and Reggie White tackled him. 
They've been staying away from Reggie White running in the other direction. Well, they have. They've been running over to Mark Bayside. There's Reichenbach. You'll see him. He's going to move along with the thing and fill for the play as it comes along. They'll hand off to George Rogers going to the left of your screen. He's following Terry Orr across him. He follows the blind, takes him right to it. Yep. Sheds off the block of R.C. Thielemann. Up front for the Redskins, Jacoby Grimm, Bostic, Thielemann, and May. And third down and four. With Bryant. Monk in motion. Deep drop. A flag is down. Seth Joyner got the sack. Joyner is skipping like a 10-year-old kid, bouncing around, happy about that. Now we check the flag, and it's against the Eagles for not turning them loose. When you hear that whistle, you've got to turn the quarterback loose, and Joyner didn't do it. And that'll be a major penalty. You're going to see Joyner come from the top of your screen. They've got an all-out blitz on Schrader, something they wanted to do, right and back up the middle. Now, Jay gets flushed. Now, right there, the whistle's blown. Okay, this is what he gets called for. That's slamming. Absolutely, there's no question. That's no foul, unnecessary roughness, 59 defense. All is returned to the line of scrimmage. Automatic first down. Automatic first down. I want to ask you a simple question. Can those players hear that whistle? I don't necessarily feel like you can hear the whistle, but you can definitely not throw a guy down to the ground and jump on top of him. I don't think it was a question of what happened. It was the way it happened that made the determination for the penalty. Well, that's not the first time we've seen it in the NFL. You get a hold of that quarterback, and they blow the whistle, and you take them back a few steps. You better not drill them to the ground. The ball's at the 31 first down. As I stand and watch, I get the feeling that Jay Schrader is not just real comfortable with what he sees defensively. He's hesitating a little bit back there, whether it's the pass rush or whether it's the good job that the secondary is doing covering receivers. It looks to me like he's just a little hesitant, a little unsure of what he wants to do with the football. Well, that last penalty really changed things around. In the second breath to the Washington offense. Bryant is in there. Well, there's one thing that is obvious as Waters made that tackle for a loss of two. These Eagles are trying to end it on a high note. They're racing all over the place. They're jumping all over the place. Somebody makes a tackle. They all give each other high fives, whether you make the tackle or not. And there you see Andre Waters, who really felt like he should have gone to the Pro Bowl this year. Yeah, brother, that cost him some money when he didn't go to the Pro Bowl. It cost him about $300,000. Third and 12. your screen he's just going to come in and put pressure on Schrader as he goes back in the pocket it's a good job you see the defense look like they're bluffing a blitz now he sets he beats Mark May inside and bam just as he started to throw the ball he hits him so despite the penalty Redskins still have to punt stay away from Cox not a very good kick and it is returned by Garrity He's beyond the 30-yard line as the Eagles get it for the second time in the second half. We played five minutes of the third quarter. A 46-yard punt scored all of their points in the first quarter. Addix and Byers are the running backs. He got a 
about a yard at the best. Up front for the Eagles, it is Reeves, Lancey, Darwin, Baker, and Conwell. No gain on that one. Second down. And Byers asks for a little relief. We haven't seen anything of uh, Tottle Latossi. Instead, Crawford comes in. Look at there. Cincinnati scrapping to get in. They still need help, even if they win their game. And Kansas City apparently is going to get in. And Cleveland is apparently going to get the home field. Crawford's in the back. Here. Only a few yards on that run with Haddix. And he ran into Dave Butts. He's a little slow getting up. Now he bounces. Bicycle Hammer has returned a couple for touchdowns, and it looks like Tampa Bay is going to lose and have the rights to test a verdict. Tampa Bay may lose, and they'll wind up winning in the long run. There are the records. That's the test of Verde sweepstakes. Tie goes to Tampa Bay with regard to getting the number one pick. Here, it's third down and seven. Coffee checks in. Vernon Dean is in for the Skins. And they bury Cunningham. Rich Malott, Marcus Cook were in there, along with Charles Mann. Well, they needed that one. Well, they did, and I got the feeling that particular series of downs, the Redskins defense all of a sudden jacked it up a notch. They hit, they stopped Byers, they stopped Haddix, and they sacked Cunningham, and they said, okay, look, enough is enough. We're going to turn it on. Now the Eagles, you know, are going to have to play good defense to keep that Redskin offense out. This is where you get the inspiration. That was the third sack of Cunningham, and this is the fourth punt by Telchik. Eric Yarber is at his 30. We've seen some short punts in this direction. This one hangs up. From the 33. Big run. One man, the kicker. Got it. And a flag. Face mask. Atelchik saved the touchdown. Number 10 defense. And forced from the end of the run. That's a five yard face mask foul. Telchik saved the touchdown. Telchik is a big enough kid to take care of himself at 6'2", 215. Here, Art Yarber breaks through that initial line. Now he just tries to outrun Telchik. Telchik does a good thing. He takes an angle on him. Now you'll see his right hand get up. The ball's at the 17. History of the National Football League. The ball at the Philadelphia 17. Will Rogers. Accepted again. Cobb came away with it. And Schrader is beside himself. He doesn't know what the heck he's doing wrong. He tried to get it to Didier, but that's the third interception he has thrown. And Green says, keep your chin up. You know, Jay Schrader's a tough kid. He's not going to get his dopper down. But to be perfectly honest with you, he is confused by the Eagles secondary. There, Gary Cobb is on the right of your screen, just outside the goalpost. Trader goes back. Now, he's trying to get the ball into Clint Didier. He just guns it, and Cobb, I don't even think he sees Cobb. Makes the interception, gets up, and Didier's going to make the tackle. There's an unhappy kid right there, Jay Schrader. Eleven times in the last three games. The ball's up to Philadelphia 10. Gain there. So after the 44 yard return by Eric Yarber, Schrader gives it right back to the Eagles. That was the best opportunity they had, and they missed another good one on another interception. Four turnovers. Well, those four turnovers will hurt you. You know, the defense stopped them, and they've done a good job. The special teams makes a couple of big returns to get good field position. The offense has just gone out and not done the job they should. Brett Garrity is in as a receiver. This is a setback. Cunningham gets down, and it's third down. Okowitz chased him to the sideline. 
Third down coming up. It is third down coming up and five. We are at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. A capacity crowd. A lot of Redskin fans are here. They've had little to cheer about. All of the scoring in the first quarter. 14 to nothing. Eagles. Washington four turnovers. Joe Theismann and Jack Buck with you. Three wide receivers. Quick. Jackson and Garrity. The blitz is on. And quick call. Three yard pass play on third down. The Eagles have decided not to put Randall Cunningham in the pocket. They're just going to sprint him away from that pass rush. Here he'll start to the right of your screen. That's Rich Milan who's going to put pressure on him. Now Randall Cunningham just does get the ball off to Mike Quick as he's being tackled. Curtis Jordan just doesn't quite get to Quick as he makes the re reception. So but he's got to be pretty happy with what he sees. Malott was a little shy chasing the quarterback, and then Jordan couldn't quite break it up. At the Eagle 48. Big to Haddix. And incomplete to Kenny Jackson. Jackson had those two touchdown passes against Dallas last week. And Kenny Jackson was wide open. Randall Cunningham made the play action fake in the pocket, got flushed out, and I'll guarantee he wishes he had that one back. If he had it at half as good as the one before, it had been a completion for him. Five and a half left in the third quarter. Joe Gibbs is trying to figure out what is going on out <laughs> on the field. He is really beside himself. Kansas City leads by 18 in the third quarter. Win means a wild card and a home game for Kansas City. Here's a delay that will run pretty well, but is way short of a first down with Byers. Third down coming up. That was a five-yard gain. And look at here. Cincinnati has come from behind in that one to lead in the third quarter. 24 to 21 over the Jets. And an important game for both of those people. Friday night, you saw the... 49ers beat the Rams 24 to 14 and that meant the Rams will go to Washington next Sunday. 49ers are a team on the rise Joe and Seattle defeated Denver 41 to 16. Seattle is still alive. They have a chance for a wild card but they need some help. Third down here. Fires missed a step when he almost fumbled the ball and Vernon Dean came up with a strong defensive play. And it's punting time for the Eagles. Well, the Redskins did the job. They stopped the Eagles' offense. Only problem is they couldn't back them up deep enough. Now the Redskins, if they're going to get any points on the board, are going to have to go a long way. But they've got Mr. Yarber back there, who's put in some pretty nifty returns today. Yarber has had three returns, and this is going to be the fifth punt of the day by Telchik. He better get ready to make a tackle. into the end zone will come out to the 20 yard line with 429 left I say this by the Eagles they're flying all over the place now the 46 yard punt but it will come out to the 20 go over the Jets so the Monday night game is going to be very important Bryant in the backfield Schrader threw it low and incomplete I guess that's something else you do as a quarterback Joe and you start getting picked off you start playing it a little on the safe side. Well, you try and keep it low and away, but, you know, you, you start pressing a little bit, too. Jay Schrader has not been affected at all. He's had some tough games interception-wise. He's bounced back. But this particular game, they're coming off of three not very good offensive performances. Pittsburgh has scored to make it closer in the third quarter at home. 24-13, Kansas City. 4-24 left in the third quarter here, second and ten. Comebacker to Sanders, caught it. Beyond the 30-yard line for a first down. Tough pattern to cover, and Fowles really plays it 
very softly defensively. Well, he does, you know, and Ricky Sanders, of course, playing for Gary Clark, as we mentioned, who's injured, hopefully will be back for their game against the Rams next week. Uh, he's a rookie. He wants to give the guy a little bit of room. He doesn't want to get beat deep. And he just, you know, they'll throw the ball over there. You feel that Jay Schrader had to have that completion to get a little bit of his confidence back. I get the feeling the Redskins are not playing with confidence offensively. Rodgers is in there. So is Didier. another first down Sanders again at the 49 Greg Brown was chasing Schrader 18 yards yeah, you know he gets flushed out of the pocket again that time he makes the completion hooks up with Sanders you know the thing about this football game is 14 points is not an insurmountable amount of, of uh, points to make up the way the Redskins move the football up and down the field He's thrown it 20 times. The Redskins have run the ball rather infrequently, only 10 times all afternoon. Tells you about the Redskin offense. And not many total plays. Monk in motion. They run it this time to Rogers. And he got about three. I think they just did that to keep him honest. You know, you don't want those the Eagle front four to tee off on you so you have to run the ball a little bit but they're going to move it they're going to have to put it in the air and continue to put it in the air buddy ryan there you see signal in the defense as to his uh, middle linebacker cleveland widening their lead trying to nail down the home field advantage for all of the playoff games winners in the central division second down eight with bryant did he earn motion and there comes greg brown and the flags come down. He said he moved. Now everybody starts pointing. Now, did you see that? He moved. Encroachment, 98 defense. Five yards. I guess he couldn't convince him that uh, he, he did convinced move, the right? crowd, but not the not official. The official. <laughs> that stops the clock with 2.11 left in the third quarter. With White on one end and Brown on the other, they're pretty good. Yes, they do. They've got two very good pass rushing defensive ends. The other thing is, is Reggie White, who plays the left side defensive end, normally that's a side where the tight end lines up a lot. You don't see guys with a lot of sacks over there. He He's going to be going to the Pro Bowl, and he does have a lot of sacks. 17. Lawrence Taylor had no sacks yesterday. And Manley hasn't had any today. That's another, well, let's see where they mark the forward progress. It is a first down. As it was caught by Bryant, the coverage by Reichenbach, eight yards. On that play, you could see how strong Jay Schrader's arm is. Someone broke free as he was backing up. He fired it upfield to Bryant. Cincinnati's still in good shape. They have to win or they're out. They still need help, even if they do win. Tampa Bay trailing by 11. 120 left in the third quarter. First down at the 40. This is an audible. Didn't quite go the way the Redskins wanted it to. Brian got two yards. We're down to less than a minute of the third quarter, and it's been a scoreless period. We haven't had any scoring since the first quarter. And Cunningham ran over for a yard and a touchdown. And Anthony Tony ran over for a yard and a touchdown. And there's Atkinson. He's been moving that screen back and forth all day today. Well, That's he, all he's done. <laughs> he's trying to stay warm. You know, he's showing he can move the thing around. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised here if you see him try and go to Diddy on that turn pattern that Terry Orr caught earlier. Second down and eight. Outside and incomplete to Monk. That was the same pass route they ran earlier that uh, Terry Orr, the tight end, caught. Art Monk cleaned out underneath on that one. On this particular play, because of the pressure on Schrader, he tried to get it off to Monk. Third and long coming up. We have three Pro Bowl wide receivers on display here today with these two teams. Gibbs trying to hook up here on third down. Evan Cooper checks in. Bernard Wilson checks in for the Eagles. 24 seconds left in the period.
Didier went in motion. And that's a fumble. And it belongs to the Eagles, they think. It was a fumble by Warren. And the Eagles still think they have it. There's a flag down back up field. There's a flag to contend with. 92 defense, roughing the passer. Roughing the passer again against Philadelphia. And that was against Reggie White. See Schrader again get flush from the pocket. He's trying to go up the field to Ricky Sanders. The Eagles drop back into a zone coverage. Gary Cobb's forcing him outside. There goes Reggie White. And he got him above the shoulders. Yeah. And then Warren fumbled, and Terry Hogue is stretched out with 11 seconds left in the third quarter. That game next Sunday, the Rams at Washington. The ball is at the 23. This will be the last play of the third quarter in all probability. A flag goes down. Calvin Bryant spun down by Reichenbach. And a penalty against the Redskins. Reichenbach went to East Stroudsburg State. He's not a big school guy. We get worried about Terry Hall. He was just winded. Number 24, two men moving. Penalty is declined. Second down. Penalty is declined. They sustain a loss, and Hold will be coming back in very shortly, probably. And four seconds remain. In the quarter, now they start the clock, and the period comes to a close. Well, the Redskins have been shut out for three quarters here. The ball is in possession of the Redskins at the Eagle 26. Schrader, Sanders, Bernard Wilson incomplete. Bernard Wilson bobbled it, almost had it. He's the extra defensive back. He had a crack at it. It'll be third down. The Redskins made the right decision that time. They decided to block Didier and Kelvin Bryant. You see the full protection. There's a full line right in front of Schrader. They've got one-on-one -on -one with Ricky Sanders. The ball gets up and starts to get away from him and gets up a little too high. Well, you hate to see that ball bouncing around the goal line in the air. Well, so had a crack at it. He's playing for Terry Hold, who still hasn't returned to the game. Third down, 13. Didier scores. What a beautifully thrown ball that was. And he waited, waited, waited till Didier broke loose. Right at the offensive line for giving him a chance to play. Clint Didier, who wasn't going to play today, he's got that broken hand, is the big play man for the Washington Redskins. They're right back in this ballgame now. He beat Waters and Fowles inside the five. That was a 26-yard scoring strike. That's the one thing about Jay Schrader. You know, he'll throw an interception, but he'll come back and make a big play. Well, he, here's the first look at Jess Atkinson. Eagles decide to play zone. He just fires it right in there. That's just a great arm making a play. Atkinson, Neil Lomax passes out at Portland State. And the kickoff forthcoming from Cox to Charles Crawford of the Eagles. So this game has a different look about it now. Michael Haddix is also back with Crawford. Sun's still shining, but only a small portion of the crowd gets the benefit of it. Deep into the end zone and out to the 20-yard line comes the old football. Thursday is Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, everyone. Nice viewing here in the fourth quarter. Eagles can't sit on it. The up back carries, that's Haddix. And he is wrestled down, and there goes the flag. He didn't turn him loose. Darrell Grant did not turn him loose, and we've seen a couple of whistles for that. And those whistles hurt your football team. You make a good defensive play, and then you get 15 yards tacked on for unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, that's what allowed Washington to continue the drive and get the touchdown before. So the Eagles benefit from this one. Daryl Grant sort of takes it on his shoulders that he wants to be the inspirational leader of that defense and that, that Redskin unit. And that time he got a little overzealous. That's a big one. 15 yards. Now 
to the 33. They're trying to figure out precisely where to mark the ball. That's what the discussion is all well, about. They're, they're trying to decide whether it's 15 yards from the point of the infraction or 15 yards from where the original line of scrimmage was. Grant has got Haddix. He's got him in his hands. Now let him go. Let him go, but he doesn't do that. He decides to try and throw him down. And you can see McAway blowing the whistle. First down here. Pretty good fake. There's it out for quick. And broken up by Tim Morrison. So far, they've run that same particular play action. They've run quick on a, a quick hook, a quick out, a post, and now a corner. And another flag is down. Against the Redskins. Illegal use of the hands. 57 defense. Going to the face. Five yards. Automatic first down. Call against Malat. Starting to turn this one into flag day. Well, the referee is trying to keep it under control. You very well know, Joe, that whenever the Giants and the Redskins or the Redskins and the Eagles or the Eagles and Giants get together, Look at Cincinnati. They're winning. Boomer Esiason having a big day. They still need help. Blitz is on and Haddix is stuck. So that and Kansas City finds themselves not quite as comfortable in the fourth quarter. Cardinals still leading Tampa Bay. Cincinnati can clinch a wild card berth with a win plus a loss by either Kansas City or New England. But with Kansas City winning, we'll have to wait and see what New England does. Second down and 14 here. The Eagles have better get something done. Myers one in motion. Look at Manley. Look out, look out, look out. Look out, look out. Look out. Look out. Oh my goodness. And he didn't go down. But he was out of bounds. Olkowitz and Manley both chasing him. Well, that's where as a quarterback, you just, you'd almost wish you had eyes behind your head. You know, you can hear him coming, but your concentration is upfield. Now, right from the right of your screen, you see Dexter Manley. He makes that big turn. Nobody gets a hand on him. And surprisingly enough, he can really run, which is evidenced right here. Now, he hits Randall Cunningham, and he's still standing. And then he goes out for... But just before he went out of bounds, he tries to throw the football. Went out of bounds at the 31. He Dexter Manley out there. You know, he's, he's out there having some fun with the crowd. He's, he's telling them to whoop it up. Come on, it doesn't bother us. This is third down and 22. Vernon Dean is in. Ken Coffey is in. You can feel the momentum changing in this game. The flag is down, and Cunningham's on the loose. It's not enough for a first down as Byers caught the ball. And now we'll check the flag holding against Philadelphia. It's going to be against, against Ken Reeves on Dexter Manley. That's one thing we talked about. Look at Manley back up field. He's really having fun uh, trying to agitate the crowd a little bit. There he is. Hey, look, it's against <laughs> them. I'm back here. Redskins will probably decline this penalty I don't think so. to they get the ball. Take it. Yeah. They might take it, Joe. I don't think so. Take the ball. Your offense is hot right now. Take the ball. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 32 defense. Oh, Holding. so Vernon Dean got offense. flagged. Penalties offset. They're going to play it over. The down. Huh. Holding and a personal foul against Dean. A lot of things going on out there. We don't have to worry about making the decision. They'll just play the down over. 13-17 remaining in the game. Dean who lost his job on the corner to the rookie Tim Morrison. Against the offense, 65. It just tacked on another penalty. Said somebody was downfield. Doesn't really matter. They're going to play the down over. Joe Gibbs very concerned at what he sees as far as his football team goes. They just haven't played with the inspiration that he wants. Third down, 21. And they blow the whistle. And a sack is called. That's the fifth of the day against Cunningham. Charles Mann and Dexter Manley were both in there. And I think Mann will get credit for the sack. 
And here's another eagle punt, the sixth of the day. Midway through the third quarter, the Redskins defense really started to pick up the tempo of this football game. But you can look all the way back to just before the end of the half when the Eagles did not pick up a first down on a second down and one. They elected to try a pass and wound up with a sack. Changed the momentum of the game. Yarber waiting for the Telchik punt. That's a good kick. From the 30 to the 36. So trying for the tying touchdown after a 51-yard punt. The Redskins have to start at their 36-yard line. Eagles, Washington, four turnovers. Ronnie Young, two interceptions, and the Redskins have been stopped on the ground. They have George Rogers in there. That's a fumble. And uh, the Eagles really blew a chance. A good bounce would have been a touchdown. Mark May recovered the ball. And it was a fumble. That's just great alert play by the offensive lineman. Right from out here, Jay Schrader's going to get pressure, get hit from behind. You'll see the ball fly free and wind up with a red skin bounce, not an eagle bounce. There you see him set in the pocket. Now, right on the left side of your screen, you see Brown come in and hit him before he gets rid of the ball. Now, Ken Clark, Clark and White both want to go for touchdowns. <laughs> no, they don't want the ball. They want the touchdown. That's a sack in the third of the day against Schrader. And second down and 24. Kelvin Bryant called it in. The catch is good, and it'll be third down and about three. Reichenbach was trailing him. Well, Reichenbach had him covered, except that he tripped and slipped and wasn't able to stay with Kelvin Bryant, which is no easy chore, I might add, anyway. Now the pickup of 22 yards. Terry Hogue is back into the lineup. He was shaken up earlier. He's playing for the Eagles now. There you see Jay Schrader joins a very, very elite group. Well, those quarterbacks that have thrown for over 4,000 yards in a single season. Bryant out to the 44-yard line with that pass reception. They've got a review now on an instant replay of whether or not Kelvin Bryant bobbled the ball. Well, at the moment, he has possession. And we have a timeout and 11-18 left in the game. And they're starting the clock again. There is no timeout. So we continue on here, and it's a third down play. They're down in a long two. Bryant is in the backfield. Didier in motion. The blitz is on. The pass is caught by Bryant. First down. At midfield. That's just an excellent job by Jay Schrader. Right in the face of the blitz, Kelvin Bryant is the hot receiver. The way, the way the Redskins set up their offense is one of the defensive men rushing belongs to the quarterback. That means if he comes free, you have to unload the football. On that play, he got pressure from the left side and got rid of it. Bryant's caught five. Schrader is over 4,000 yards. And we're down to 10.53 left in this game. Trying for the tying touchdown. Monk in motion. Inside the 30-yard line goes Art Monk and Terry Hogue wrapped him up. Well, there aren't many who have passed for more than 4,000 yards in a season, but Schrader has done it in his first full year. The others, what a list. Namath, Fouts, Sipe, Dickey, Kenny, Marino, Omax, Sims, and now Schrader. Your name's not there? Joseph. No, never got that far. Never. We were, you know, we were a running football team, not a passing football team. <laughs> the Redskins here are a big play passing football team. Although you've seen them get big plays on, on, on pass plays, this is a situation in a ball game where they like to run the ball up the middle, even though Kelvin Bryant is in the backfield besides George Rogers. First down at the 29. Instead of George Rogers, excuse me. Leaping on his back was linebacker Giles after Struthers had made the first hit a nine yard gain you get the sense in this football game that the size of that offensive line of the Redskins is starting to take charge Jacoby Grimm Bostic Thielman 
May and Donnie Warren at the tight end position. They're starting to move the Eagles back a little bit more. Cleveland, Cincinnati, Kansas City all taking care of themselves today. We're under 10 minutes left. Second down and a yard. Ryan was spun off course, but a, he went for a first down, and the ball is dead even though it came loose. And Bryant is a little worse off. Three yard gain and a first down, but he paid for it. Stops the clock with 9.03 left in the game, and when we're through here, the Bears play at Dallas. Dallas would like to end on a higher note. They were knocked off by these Eagles last week, and the Bears having their problems on offense, but defensively, they are still terrific. Defensively, it almost seems like they can just turn it on whenever they want. Got clock is running. Sanders in his first and goal at the eight yard line. Once again, Albert Fowles was playing very softly over there. Well, you know, Fowles is a rookie and he's just sort of in no man's land. He doesn't know quite how close to play or how far off. That time he played off and they shot the football out to Sanders. You mean a rookie with regard to starting over there in the corner? That's right. Now it's first and goal at the eight yard line. said earlier that the Eagles couldn't afford to sit on the ball when they had it the last time. They played it rather conservatively. Rodgers looking for the end zone. Got a lot of that yardage and bumped out by Reichenbach. Chased out more than anything else. That offensive line, Jacoby, Grimm, Bostic, Thielman, and May. Now you see on the left side, that's Didier. There goes Jacoby pulling around the corner. That's a lot. It's 320 pounds turning a quarter on a linebacker. George Rogers with good speed gets outside. Good blocking by number 85, Don Warren. A four-yard gain. Down two and a half yards from the goal line. Now they, now they bring in all their big people. They, they bring in everybody that's weighs something. See Reggie McKenzie in, Raleigh McKenzie in, Bostic, Thielman. Second down. And it is a touchdown. Don Warren, who doesn't get into the end zone very often. That's his first of the year. Well, that's, the, that's very unusual for the Washington Redskins. They basically try and run the ball in when they're close. That time they fake to George Rogers into the line. Let Donnie Warren sneak out into the flat for the touchdown. I'm sure the Eagles weren't expecting it, because the Redskins just don't do it. 8.27 left in the game as Atkinson attempts to tie it up. Now Joe Gibbs can go over and take a little drink. His mouth isn't quite as dry as it was before. Atkinson from the University of Maryland. Knocks it through in powerful fashion to tie it up. And, of course, he's kicking where... Max Zendejas had been kicking. Zendejas now on the injured reserve. Well, the Redskins trailed 14 to nothing. They've come back to tie it with 8.27 left. More bubbly. They're trying to snap the modest two-game losing streak. Their offense feels a lot better about the way they've played this last six, seven minutes of the fourth quarter. They're starting to move the football a little bit, something they weren't able to do earlier in the game. Eagles really hurt themselves with the penalties. Here's a split kick. And Jody Schultz, a linebacker, took it out near the 30-yard line. Tonight, on CBS, we start. That's exclusive with Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes tonight. Meanwhile, the Eagles have to move the ball. Whoa. Incomplete. Harold Grant was coming after the ball that went off the hands of Kenny Jackson. Cincinnati. Boomer Esiason has thrown four touchdown passes. And the Bengals have to win and still need help. And Cleveland is going to have the home field advantage in the AFC throughout the playoff. And Tampa Bay apparently is going to have the draft rights to test the verdict. 
Kansas City is having their hands full at Pittsburgh. They lead by only five, and it's second and ten here from the 28. He stumbled and goes down after crossing the 30-yard line. Rich Malott staring him in the eye. Third and long coming up. Randall Cunningham makes the play action fake into the, into the line of scrimmage and dances around. There you see what Washington has done. Shut out completely for three quarters. Now they've started to pick up the tempo again and get back into what everybody calls Redskin football. And that's uh, move it. Bang, bang, bang. And on both sides of the ball, they're a good deal more active now. Yeah, I really think it started in the middle of the third quarter when the defense picked up the tempo and you had that big punt return. Dean and Coffey check in. For the skins on third and seven. Try to get it downfield to Ron Johnson. And time for the Eagles to punt. Covering was Tim Morris. That time Randall Cunningham just didn't make the kind of throw he wanted to. Obviously, it was over the inside shoulder instead of the outside shoulder. Johnson couldn't make the turn and get back to the ball. Well, they stopped the run. They made them pass. They were incomplete. So Telchik will punt for the seventh time. He should wind up with good field position. Had a fine average today. Eric Yarber is back at his 25. Get the snap from Little. Yarber returns it to the 30 yard line, and Charles Crawford tackled him a 41 yard punt. Is this defense going to be good enough to hold the Redskins? Have they been better this year under Buddy Ryan? Not if you look at the numbers. I think what happened is everybody talked about the Eagles. They've got a new team, a new look, a new concept. No more zone, all man-to-man. -man. But the results, as you saw, were not that different as far as this year has gone, as opposed to last. Well, they could make their mark felt here. Greater from the 30. a gain of about four yards out to Art Monk. Seth Joyner was the tackler. This, this is where the Eagle defense has got to come up with some kind of a big play. They put pressure on Schrader, forced him out of the pocket. Here they have to do the same thing. On the other side, the Redskins have got to do what they've been doing. Short passes, a good run here and there, and maybe a shot to try and get a big one. The Bears at Dallas right after this game on CBS. Chance to look at one of the best teams in the league, the Chicago Bears, second and five. Woo! First down to Didier. Once again, taking advantage of things, and it was Waters and Cobb who brought him down. That pass was almost a little late getting there. Sometimes you first... get to the well too much, you know. You gotta watch those little hitches. We have our first final of the day, and the Falcons, who started off in such great fashion, end up 7-8-1 with their victory today, and the Lions 5-11. and 11. They show signs of better things ahead. Cincinnati leading by 24 in the fourth quarter over the Jets. The Jets are in the playoff. Looks like they're blowing their chance to win the division. So they still could. Pass is incomplete. That was not a good decision. No, and Gary Cobb is wondering I mean, why he was so flat-footed on the play. You just can't. You can't run to your left and just hang the ball up in the middle of the football field and throw it back. If you get trapped, throw it away. Look at that story. First half, second half. It's really flip-flop. That's how good a team the Redskins are. You just can't keep them down for a whole game. And that's how good the Eagles are starting to become. They play only a half, and then they, you know, have a little trouble the second half. The Eagles are a growing football team. The Redskins have got to maintain consistency for four quarters. Evan Cooper checks in. Bernard Wilson for the Eagles. Calvin Bryant for Washington. 542 left in the game. It is in motion. And they dumped that one off. 
in the direction of Didier, but he didn't expect to complete that one, and it's third and ten. Jay Schrader did a good job just dancing around the pocket long enough to buy some time to get rid of the football. You don't hurt your football team with a bad play. You just come up third down and ten. Simmons, Brown, and Clark were all after him. Say this for McAway, the referee there. He's called and made some calls here today, and he stopped all that stuff that was going on. He sure has. This is a type of a, of a situation in the ball game where they'll try and maybe go to Dinger down the middle or Monk or Sanders up the sidelines on long passes. Third and ten. Critical play for the Skins. Long to Sanders. Oh, what an effort. It's a catch at the 16-yard line. Sanders with a brilliant catch. Covered by Ronnell Young, 41 yards. That's just one of those cases where you've got a guy who's been sitting on the bench behind an all-pro to the right of your screen. You're going to see Schrader back in the pocket. Ricky Sanders just runs a simple up pattern, and Jay does a great job of laying it out. Now, Sanders, you talk about laying out. He lays out for this ball. Good. Makes the catch. Comes down with it for the completion. You know, I talked to the Redskin coaches. They feel he's as good a receiver as there is on, on their football team. Except they can't get him to play. That, that ball darn near touched the deck, didn't it? Darn near, but it didn't. Ball at the 16. And some turnaround for the Redskins. are cooking now. They have Rogers in there. There was a hole, and he got about five. And the clock is running, and we have four and a half left in the game. Sanders has caught five passes today, 94 yards, taking the place of Gary Clark, who probably will play next Sunday, right? Gary Clark should play. In talking to him, you know, he practiced yesterday and told Coach Gibbs, listen, I ran around a little bit today. I'm okay. I mean, the guy's only five foot nine, but it's all heart. Second down, five yards to go from the 11th. Again. And we'll be third down coming up, and we're under four minutes. That's just the offensive line of the Washington Redskins handling that up front line of Brown, Struthers, Clark, and White of the Eagles. Do you think we have a nervous Atkinson along the sideline? Fortunately, well, yes and no. Yes, because it's a field goal. No, because he's had an opportunity to kick a couple extra points. You know, they thought about trying to lobby for the two-point conversion with all the troubles the Redskins have had just scoring extra points, but uh, they feel like they may have an answer here with Jess Atkinson. We've had some kickers. Max and Dejas on injured reserve. They hope he'll be back next year competing for his job. It is third down and a long one. Lauren is the up back. He really crashed in there. And Rodgers got to the five, and that's first and goal. Ronell Young came up and stopped the play. First and goal. Right now, right now, Young, right there in the corner of your screen, is going to come. That's Terry Holt. Now you'll see Young fill and just meet George Rogers right at the line of scrimmage. Terry Holt steering that play back into Ronell Young. Now the Redskins are doing to the Eagles what had been done to them earlier with regard to chewing up that clock. 2:40 left in the game. I can't see the Redskins putting the ball in the air. I think they know they've got a shot at a chip shot field goal, and they'll try and run it out, run the clock down, get close. Boy, and a full head of steam, and it's a touchdown. Was he blasting off that ball? That's George Rogers' foot. That's Redskin football. You give the ball to the big guy in the back. Let May and Warren and Thieleman just blow him out. There are some Redskin fans here. That's the one thing about the Washington Redskins. They play 60 minutes of football. Sometimes it looks very sloppy. But other times, once they get it rolling, they're like a machine going downhill. You just can't stop it. And it's not a case of Joe Theismann and me jumping on the bad wagon. They looked awful in the early part of this game. Yeah, they really did. For three quarters, they really did not play well. Atkinson tries to make it a seven-point lead. It's good. Boy, that rider was really powerful on that run. You'll see the offensive line just blow them out. They're just going to move that whole defensive line and linebackers of the Eagles. 
They just fire out, man on man. And George Rogers just jumps the wave and rides it on into the end zone. Surfs right on in. They put in some big, big folks up front, and they call that their jumbo offense. Jacoby, Grimm, Bostic, Thielman, May, McKenzie, McQuaid, Warren. Warren's the lightest of the group. At 242. They're all, and they're all growing. This is all, all these weights are done before breakfast, by the way. They all weigh a little bit more when it comes around to game time. Now, the Eagles have to scramble, and the problem for them, as we look at Jacoby, for example, they have him marked it. 305, but that's plus tax. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Plus tax, about 15 pounds. Also, this is the first year that Joe Jacoby in the last two has not gone to the Pro Bowl, which I'm sure he has something to prove. Cincinnati in great shape. Kansas City hanging on. Cleveland will have the home field advantage. Tampa Bay apparently will have the draft rights to test the birding. Houston winning in the fourth quarter. 20 to 6 Atlanta. Well, we gave you that with the final score. Minnesota, a very good team, leading over New Orleans. The bad spot for the Eagles, Lee. When you're in a spot like this, 219 left in the game, and you need a touchdown. The one thing they didn't want to do, have to throw the football. Right now, they're going to have to. Steve Fox kicking off, and Crawford has it go out of the end zone. And that's a big advantage for Washington. That's one department. That's one department where the Redskins are strong in the kickoff department. Now, Randall Cunningham was not 100% when this day started with a bad right thumb. Now, he heard it a few weeks ago against St. Louis and just before an overtime started, and it, he just doesn't have the feel on the ball. We've seen it a couple times particularly on the long passes. It just starts to get away from me. He's not quite as accurate as sure as he'd like to be. And it's cold here. It's under the 40 mark, and the wind is swirling around from the 20. Three wide receivers, Jackson, Johnson, and Quick. And fires, and he gets out of bounds. five left. The Redskins have their pass covering linebackers in. Balot, Coleman, plus the fifth defensive back, Kenny Coffey. You see the second the secondary in the back. 28 Green, Coffey 48, Dean 32, Jordan 22. Tim Morris in the right corner, 41. That was good for seven yards, and it's second down and three. What a big hop. Hop by Green and Jordan. This area right here with Garrity on the post, which he caught on the last play, that's the voided part of that defense. Now you see Bowles, excuse me, Tim Morrison dropping back in zone coverage, and there goes Garrity into the hole just between the linebackers and the secondary. He got whacked by Jordan, but Garrity, who thinks it's Thursday, got up and walked off the field under his own power. First down at the 48. to Ron Johnson at the 36 yard line and the clock continues to run ball popped loose but they blew the whistle and the ball is at the 36 of the skins each team has three timeouts remaining and now they stop the clock and the Eagles employ one of their timeouts that was a 16 yard pickup to Ron Johnson and a line drive throw by Cunningham By that time the Redskins decided instead of sitting back in the zone defense, they were going to come after him and try and put pressure on him. Didn't work. Let's him. Do you want to play zone? Neither one has worked so far in this drive. And the Redskins haven't been able to latch on to many turnovers on the part of the Eagles. None today. That's right. That's been a problem for them these last three ball games. It's been a problem for Washington trying to get a hold of the ball. First down. Overthrew everybody, including. Johnson, who was covered by Morrison. 1-3-7 left in the game, second and 10. 14 points were scored by the Eagles in the first quarter. A one-yard run by Cunningham, then a one-yard run by Tony, and there is McFadden, but 
They don't want a field goal. They he's, need the touchdown. He's because practicing for the extra point. He's practicing for the winter league. He's going to play football <laughs> in Puerto Rico. 21 points in the third quarter by Washington. Swing pass out to Byers incomplete. Didier caught a touchdown pass. Warren caught a touchdown pass and Rodgers had a five yard run all in the third quarter. The Redskins play at home next Sunday against the Rams and we still don't know what time that game will be played. What the Eagles want to do now is although it's third down and ten even if they get a four, five or six yard completion they're going to have to go for it on fourth down so Cunningham doesn't have to try and pick up all this yardage on this particular play because they are committed to going all the way they trail by seven. And the Bears play at Dallas when we're through here. No pressure. And the pass is covered well and incomplete and almost picked off by Daryl Green on the corner. That's what you were talking about earlier, Joe, that Green is the guy who could get him that turnover. Well, he certainly can. Daryl Green is a big play guy. It seems like every time he gets his hands on the football, everybody holds their breath. Like I say, you can beat him quickly, which you'll see Mike Quick on the inside route here. Run the corner. Daryl Green trailing him is in perfect position. Got in front of him. And now he's there. You know, he's not a big guy. He's about giving away six, seven inches to Mike Quick, but doesn't matter. He can jump through the ceiling. On third down, the Eagles two out of eight today. Meanwhile, on fourth down, five out of 11 prior to today. Fourth down here. This might be their last offensive play of the year. And the 10 yards. Into traffic and incomplete. And it kind of looks like the Redskins have won this one. 119 remaining in the game. Jordan and Vernon Dean were helping out. No flags. The play stands. And the Redskins with quite a comeback today. Right from the right of your screen, you're going to see Dexter Manley finally get there and put pressure on Randall Cunningham. He didn't have any sacks today, did he? No, he didn't. That's Monty Coleman. Now there comes Dexter, just goes around the corner. But he's had a lot of hurries. And that caused the ball to sort of hang and create a jump ball situation. And now with 119 left, the Redskins have to run that time off of the clock. And there's Buddy Ryan. His first year is under his belt. I think he made some strides, don't you, Joe? I really do. He, you know, he's revamped this entire football team. We showed the statistics of the defense earlier. They haven't changed drastically in the last year. But I guarantee you, this is a football team that is going in one direction, and that is up. There's no question who's in charge out there either. There'll be 5, 10, and 1 if it ends like this, and the Redskins will win their 12th game of the year. They're still trying to move the ball with Rodgers, who got that winning touchdown, apparent winning touchdown, timeout called by the Eagles. And we have 114 left in the game as the Redskins, who trailed 14 to nothing, scored all 21 points in the fourth quarter and lead by seven. The playoff. Winning today, apparently, over San Diego. Here, the Eagles have only one timeout remaining. And it's second down and seven. We know that George Rogers has fumbled frequently in the past. He hangs on to it here, making it third down and about two as he got five, and the Eagles use another timeout. Woo, look at Cincinnati over the New York Jets. Still alive. But they still need help. Cincinnati can be a wild card now only if New England loses. The Jets, of course, are in the playoff but lost their last five in a row. That's right. That's not the way to go into the And they the could still be the division champion even though they've lost five in a row if New England loses. That's right. Now Miami is out of it and they entertain New England in the Monday night game. So Schrader with one more snap of the ball and they'll try to get the first down because failing to do that they'd still have to kick it Kansas City hanging on trying to get into the playoff it's not indicated that that's a final yet that will be the first time in 15 years if they do get in if they do get in and there'll be a wild card and there'll be a home field wild card team meanwhile these Redskins play the Rams next Sunday Third down and two, so they'll try for the first down here. And they didn't get it. It's fourth down. Only a one-yard gain, and the clock continues to run. The Eagles cannot stop it. The 
Bears game is underway in Dallas, so as soon as we end it here, we'll switch you down there, and CBS will show you the Bears and the Cowboys. Joe Gibbs wants to know what's the deal. Well, Fourth and one. He's given instructions. He says take time out with one second left on the 30-second clock so they don't take the five-yard penalty. Okay. One week from Sunday, the Redskins are home at RFK Stadium. The Rams will be there. I hope they have weather that's no worse than it was here today. Pretty good for this time of year. And the winner of that game, if the Redskins win, they'll play at Chicago. If the Rams win, they'll play at New York. Oh, they're gonna they, now they're they take time out with one second left. And the game clock is down to 12 seconds, so about the only chance eagles have is to run this punt back and i don't think they're going to put anybody back they're probably going to try and rush 11 people to block the kick that's right or block the kick and pick it up and go on in they missed a, a, a wonderful opportunity earlier when ken clark and reggie white and both had Andrea the ball white. in their hands but i really think this whole game boils back down to with about three minutes to go in the second quarter the eagles had a second down in one they chose to try a, a pass play instead they of picking up the first down, sacked. keeping the clock running, and taking the ball away from the Redskins. They lost field position. They did not get any points. They would have had an opportunity to kick a field goal, which would have made it 17-0, and really forced the Redskins to score three times just to tie them. And, Joe, that doesn't fit into the category of a second guess because it just wasn't a very smart call. No, I, I just think it's a bad call at that time. You know, you've got momentum. You've got control of the football game. You, you know, you got to keep the ball away from the Redskins offense. They can score from anywhere. You want to watch a rush, folks? Watch the Eagles come after the kicker, Cox. This is what's known as bringing everybody and the kitchen sink. Uh-oh, Buddy Ryan's in there. You see him right now? <laughs> all... 12 seconds left in the game. Oh, no, up offside. They'll need a good snap from Boskett. They get it, and Cox rushes it away with nobody back. The clock is running, and... Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I'd like to welcome those of you who watched the Redskins come from. They didn't have any time left, and the game is over, and Joe Gibbs has got to feel a whole lot better about the 21 points in the fourth quarter. Final score here. And the Eagles, 14. Words from your local station. Merry Christmas.